Peter loved the Christians he wrote to. He was writing to them to encourage them during difficult times. He wanted to remind them that their Heavenly Father loved them so much. We all get in trouble. Even little baby Adam here. He sometimes loves to play with his food so much he loves to stick his hand in his little food container and mash it all around and finger paint with it and just get it everywhere. Sometimes he likes to just bite us for no good reason even when we're holding him and loving him. Sometimes he wants to get his mommy's attention when she's holding him. He'll crawl up to her and pull her hair when she's not looking and then he'll just smile at her like <laughs> I got your attention, even though I did something wrong. He loves to dive off of his diaper changing table and the couch like a million times a day, just head first toward the ground with no regard for his safety. I have to catch him all the time just to save his life. Our Heavenly Father loves us so much that he came down to save us once and for all. And this is what Peter was reminding the Christians about, that their Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, loved us so much that He came down to save us. And He wanted to ensure that they remembered that even after He was gone. Let's watch the video. Peter was one of Jesus' disciples who became a leader in the early church. He wrote two letters in the Bible to help believers who were facing hard times. When Peter wrote a second letter, he was in a Roman prison. He had been arrested because he was a follower of Jesus. Peter wrote, we have everything we need because we know Jesus. When we trust in his righteousness, he gives us power to live for him. He is good and he promises us good things. So this is how we should seek to live. Along with faith, seek these things, goodness, knowledge, self-control, patience, brotherly affection, and love. When we have these qualities, Jesus will be glorified in our lives. When we remember the good promises God has for us, we can rely on his power to resist temptation. Peter wanted the believers to remember what Jesus had done for them. Jesus did the greatest work by dying on the cross. He has taken away our sins. Because of Jesus, God invites us into his kingdom and gives us eternal life. Peter wrote, God has chosen you and given you his power, so do everything you can to live like Jesus. Peter knew he was going to die soon. So he also wrote, you already know what I'm telling you. I want to keep reminding you as long as I am living so that you will remember even after I'm gone. We did not tell you made up stories. We told you what we saw and heard. Jesus lived a perfect life and died the death we deserve for our sin. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and changes our hearts. Jesus calls and empowers his followers to live like him. Today, our questions are about being like Jesus. I'm ready for the first question. How do we live like Jesus? Hmm, uh, by using what God has given us? Peter says God has given us everything required for life and godliness. How can we live a godly life like Jesus? By showing our love. And not just love, we are like Jesus when we have faith and when we show goodness, self-control, wisdom, and godliness. Quibbles, how can we grow in godliness? Well, I become more like God when I read his word, the Bible. I also grow in godliness when I pray and when I worship. That's right. The more time we spend with God, the more like him we become. God is with us no matter what, and he will never stop loving us. But we feel closer to him when we pray, read the Bible, and worship. Peter instructed the believers to live like Jesus. We can live like Jesus too. 